Okay, thank you for tuning in to Snamscaping 101. This is a scene that took me, oh, I don't know, it took me about 15 minutes or something like this, but I wanted to do some 10 to 15 minute cards. 10 minutes would be a really great um, goal for me. I can do this probably in 10 minutes, but I wouldn't be kind of explaining what I'm doing as I went along. So, you know, 15 minutes or so. But quick and easy cards, but quick and easy, we don't want to just do some things that are just look super simplified and kind of are lacking for certain things. We want everything to be in there that we would normally want in a card in terms of, um, you know, the color saturations, the deeper space, um, you know, foreground, midground, background types of um, uh, depths. And then I also use some of my gel pen work in here for some stars and a little highlighting in that uh, cabin area right there. And then I also put a little bit of my um, white pigment ink, a uh, little detailing within the scene uh, to really round everything off as far as this one um, type of uh, look goes with dye based inks on glossy cardstock. Okay, there's a lot of other media that we can use as well um, that is not, you know, like this and uh, you know we can come up with some really effective you know 10 to 15 minute cards and whatnot but working in this medium I wanted everything to be in there but let's just make it you know faster so what I did was I didn't use as much of this as I normally do okay and I would probably go for a little bit more highlighting here and there but I don't find it really lacking for anything like that, so I think it looks just fine. I tend to be real detail-oriented, and sometimes I get really into the minutia, and uh, you know, a 15-minute card come, becomes a half an hour or something like that, just because I love getting lost in little details. But I do like this card just as is like this, so... Anyways, if you choose to watch the video, hope you enjoy it, and as I mentioned in this video, I'll try to come up with some more, you know, really fast types of compositions that, you know, hopefully aren't lacking for anything or seem like they're missing anything as far as kind of a complete um, visual statement goes. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Have any questions, comments, drop us a note in the comment section below. Okay, uh, someone recently gave me the idea for doing... Um, some very quick scenes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and uh, I thought we can do that. That should be a series of videos, in fact. All right, so let me see. I'm starting at about 3.21 p.m. Now, I'm not just going to try to keep this under 10 minutes, you know, just for, you know, the absolute, you know, the sake of it, but let's do some quick scenes, okay? Now, I don't want to just do a, a really simple scene that seems to be lacking in a lot of different um, aspects that can make a scene look full and complete. We want, you know, complete scenes um, in this, uh, what might be, maybe will be a series of videos on just, you know, quick and, uh, quick and easy, I guess. Um, but let's see what we can come up with here, okay. But like I said, I mean, if I don't, it's not absolutely, you know, I'm not going to be dead set on 10 minutes, you know, where it's like, you know, the timer goes off and, you know, I can't complete something if it's going to take a, a little bit more time. But anyways, I'm using nature set number six. Okay, this comes in wood, unmounted or cling foam mounted versions. Okay. I think I have my cling foam version of it too, but I don't know, you guys can kind of see the indexing on these ones a little bit easier, so I'm just going to use that. Okay, now I've stamped out the lakeside cabin in black and the ledges, two impressions of it in black here in the foreground, okay? And just for kicks, I'm going to add in a little bit of variation into this black inked up version of the pine row here, okay? And kind of working in this format, you know, keeping with the, the time in mind, I, I am going a little bit more organized than I normally am in that I've, you know, I've, I have all my pads kind of lined out here, you know, instead of reaching across as I do in all these videos, kind of figuring things out as I go. But, you know, we'll go for a, a fairly simple um, color scheme here, okay? So what I've done is I've wiped off some of the bottom of this right here so that it kind of fades out on the bottom portion of it, okay, where it stamps out lighter than the top. 
And I will mask out that cabin, but I can stamp over all of those darker trees because dye based inks are transparent. So if I stamp a light green over the top of, you know, dark black, it's not as if the lighter green is going to look like it's in front of it, okay? So a little bit of a variation. It's kind of an olive green black, you know, because it's kind of a fusion of those two colors mixed together, okay? I probably could have wiped off a little bit more of that, but we'll do it on this one. But it looks fine as this too. All right, so it depends how wet your pad is, um, pen, you know, the wetter the pen or the drier the black, the more green is going to show than black. But, you know, it doesn't really matter one way or another. It's just, it'll be a little bit different looking. So there's no wrong or something like that, you know. It's not like, oh, those trees stamped out too dark on this one, you know. It's, it's wrong. We just want them a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, lighter um, to create that depth. And I do have a video on that one. Okay, so you can see where I've kind of wiped it off the bottom right there, it kind of fades out like that, so it shows the silhouette of these trees a little bit more, you know, than it would have if I just stamped out in black. Stamping it out in black would look fine as well. This just adds a little bit of variation and depth there. Okay, all right, so I tell you what, let's stamp out our foreground a little bit later. Let's get on with some um, toning of the scene. I have three different variations of blue. I'm going with the memento because those are all available out there. But like I said, you don't have to get in past videos and sand in this one, but you don't have to get caught into um, certain brands and lines of inks. Okay, you can use, you can just mix and match. In fact, I just ordered a bunch of memento re inkers as well as some um, distress ink re inkers. And, you know, I didn't plan it out. I just kind of took a look at it. I like a lot of blues, so I ordered a bunch of blues. Okay, now this is smearing a little bit. This is where kind of, you know, expediting this process um, a little bit, you know, is not serving me well. So I will dab like this instead of wiping like that in some areas, okay? That way I won't kind of drag out some of that color. If it, some of it does get a little bit, oh, I don't know, smeary, that's kind of fine because I want this to be kind of these a little bit, of, you know, atmospheric striations, I don't know, for lack of a better description would come into play. You know, like you look at the clouds and there's, um, I forget the type of the clouds those are that kind of real, um, I don't know, those ones with a lot of striations in it. Okay, so putting some of this down on these rocks as well. Now, this pad, this summer sky is really dry here, so I'm kind of having to use a little bit more pressure than, you know, is my preference. I think that was one of the re-inkers that I did order. I ordered a lot of re-inkers for pads that I don't even have because I just plan on using it for the ink and not for the color, you know, not to make impressions. So I don't really need the pad form. Pad forms are, they are convenient though. You just dip in and go. But um, I, you know, when I was ordering them, uh, just like any other stamper, I'm in the industry and stuff like that, but I'm not ordering them wholesale or anything like that because you're just, you know, I'm not ordering in bulk, you know, for my, you know, to sell, to resell. So I just, I just figured I'd rather get twice as many colors than, you know, to get the pad and ring or combination. Okay, so that was my summer sky there. So let's go in with this. Bahama blue. Okay, now this is where I was mentioning, eh, if it smears a little bit, no big deal. You know, because it will get darker anyways, and we hopefully won't be able to see those kind of smeary little touches in there as much. Okay, if you look closely, of course, yeah. So how those striations kind of look a little bit more natural like that, you know, having those kind of streaks in the sky. Like so, okay. And... 
That also happens down in the water areas as well. I think one of my bulbs is blowing out, if you can hear that, if that's picking up on the video. Fluorescent bulb in my lighting uh, system here. Um, okay, there we go with that. Leaving a little bit of reflected light down in that water just by not coloring it in. <clears throat> Let's go with some Danube blue. It's kind of a navy blue. I have no idea what colors I ordered, um, but I think I ordered about, between Distress and uh, the Memento, I probably ordered out of about, I don't know, nine or ten maybe, eight, something, I don't know, eight, ten reinkers. I think about half of them were different tones of blue. There were blues like in the Distress inks that I didn't even know existed, um, just because, I, I don't know, I'm behind the times as far as... Um, a lot of uh, these things that are out there these days. I mean, for all I know, that you know, these pads could have been around for 10 years, you know, those colors. Okay, so we have that going right there, okay? Let's go to a gray now. Um, oh, that was another color that I ordered. London Fog. This one, mine is getting kind of dry, so... Let me see it. Can you hear that on the video? It's getting a little bit loud. I think I'm going to lose another bulb. All these bulbs, you know, this lighting array for studio kind of, you know, lighting is a... Uh, all these bulbs are all going out, of, out at about the same time. Okay, see that right there? See, I'm kind of leaving some areas a little bit lighter than other areas. So it's a little bit varied. It's not, you know, hugely varied right now. All right, I am going and dipping into some more pads, so I didn't pull everything out. But if I had, maybe this would take, you know, a few seconds less time. And trying to get this as quickly as possible. Which makes sense, you know. I mean, I, I should have some cards that are, uh, you know, pretty... You can do pretty quickly. I, all the cards that I do, well, not all of them, but a lot of them can be done very quickly. I just spend a lot of time on my details, you know, like with the, uh, you know, the gel pens, the alcohol pens, and things like that. I love adding in little details to, to scenes, so sometimes they take a little bit of time as far as that aspect goes. Alright, that bulb is getting really loud. I hope it just blows out. Okay, here's some black. I'll add some of this down here. Like I said, I want this to be a, a really complete looking composition. I don't want it just to be missing a bunch of things. That's why it was faster to do. I still want it to be nice and complete and full looking as a finished piece. Just, you know, maybe some of the, uh, the minutia you know, won't be there. Little, very, you know, kind of subtle little touches might not be in there. But we'll see. I don't know. I haven't done too many. Uh, the simple scapes um, scenes that I've done in the past, you know, braring and things like that, you know, those ones were really quick too as well. All right. Uh, looks pretty good there. We have our cabin, okay. Now this... <laughs> Alright, I might have to stop this video. That is getting really irritating, okay. Pens are really quick to fill in little tiny detailed areas like that. Well, it's not real tiny, but um, that was a brownish gray. Let's put a little bit of this other color on the top of that cabin there. I don't like using one color, you know, so I always kind of mix and match, you know, to add variation into a given um, object like this. It just seems to look much more um, full and saturated when you do that. Okay, and 
let's go some of that brownish gray. I like that brownish gray color. Let's add some of that down on these rocks around that cabin, just to give them a little bit of variation there. See that? Okay, now. I think I passed up the 10 minutes, but 10, 15 minutes or so. Okay, adding this in. Now, if you watched one of my more recent videos, I was talking about basically sandwiching your forms, okay? We have this foreground right here of this um, rock, okay? Now we've added these reeds right here, which is now the foreground. Kind of the foreground and that rock are all part of the foreground right here, but kind of layering kind of a front, middle, back in the foreground itself can be a nice little touch, okay? And it just makes the pieces look that much deeper in terms of your kind of your depth of field and as far as your layered imagery goes. And it's just a subtle little thing. I'm just masking off the rock. So now we have some of these reeds in front of the rock where it goes down here and right off the page. And we have some of those reeds behind the rock. And see how, because foreground, you have a lot of depth within the foreground. The midground is back here. And I guess the background is kind of just that sky in there. But just having kind of that, you know, front and back of these given spaces, midground has the front and back. Foreground has kind of a back, middle, and front, okay? But it's all part of that foreground. But look how much deeper that looks in terms of an object. So instead of just having two objects, the rock, uh, the ledge, and reeds right here, now we've created a much deeper space using those in combination with one another, but not just using them, in, you know, kind of in a, a real flat kind of thought process. We're thinking about it from behind, middle, and front within this whole front area, okay? So that, that really gives you, in my opinion, more for your money. You know, we can make all kinds of different foregrounds. You can have some of that grass growing out from some of those, you know, cracks in the rock. So you just mask off that little crack and then you have the gra grass growing out of that portion. All right, so um, let's put a little bit of, you know, lighting in there, a little bit of a warm light. This is a a dry, I don't know, I need to get that flowing there. Gel pen, but let's put a little bit of warmth. It can be a real dark yellow, and the area around this window has to be a little bit lighter, but I'll put a little bit of this into the uh, reflections down here, okay? Because <clears throat> we don't want something just completely void of all the details, okay? So you see the little gel pen lighting in there and I've kind of reiterated that down here in the water so it looks like that warm light coming out of that cabin like so and I don't know kind of first star of the night type of thing or first few stars of the night okay <clears throat> I'll put this, some of this down here it's kind of sparkles in my water and just to show you how it doesn't have to take too much time, you know, to do all, you know, some, some little details. I'm not going to add, you know, five minutes worth, but um, we'll take a little bit of the pigment ink like so. Okay, white pigment ink, and uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. <clears throat> Blot off. Don't, you know, use a lot of ink here. I'm really taking off a lot of that so it doesn't leave me a blob. And let's go in and uh, add a little bit of uh, highlighting, or well, it's not really highlight, it's uh, kind of a diffusion of light, I guess you can say, making that light around one of those stars a little bit softer, and looks a little bit more, I don't know, kind of a dominant shape in the sky, you know, as far as that one star, going like that. See how it's kind of that softer glow? So, I mean, it doesn't really stand out from these other ones. I made it, the dot a little bit larger, too. And if you want a little bit of a, 
kind of a mist coming off the lake. You can kind of add a little bit down there if you add too much. Just kind of blot it off with your finger and uh, take off as much as you want. This doesn't dry real fast. Don't use the brilliance one. Just use about any other type other than brilliance. I, sometimes I use brilliance if I want to get it a lot lighter and it just won't get any lighter because this is more of a translucent one but and it brilliance is supposed to dry on glossy cardstock really quickly so all right so anyways that looks pretty good for a pretty quick card but I don't find it lacking for anything we have our kind of tighter detailed areas in it right and uh, you know it has those gel pen highlights that tend to look really good. A little bit of the uh, kind of frosty area. Okay, this video has gone 18 minutes, so it's more of a, like a 15 minute card. It, I mean, it would go faster if I wasn't kind of explaining things, you know, as I went along too, but, uh, you know, uh, pretty fast. And that's using everything. That's using dye-based inks, um, color transitions, you know, within, you know, the, the, those given forms back there. Uh, what was it? Four different layers of colors up here, as well as in my rocks down here. Gel pen and pigment ink, you know, and this scene looks, you know, like a pretty full statement, in my opinion. I don't find anything really to be lacking about it. Let me see. I was going to say my camera's compensating for it. It's a little bit darker than uh, what it looked like with that black paper overcompensated but anyways fun stuff and I'll try to do some more of these um, you know real quick cards here and uh, we'll try them in some different media as well but I think people are interested in a lot of these dye based looks here and uh, whatnot within the scenes but you can see the difference between is there a big difference between this one and one that I might take 45 minutes on you know, more in the details, I would put a lot more pigment ink here and there. There would be a little bit of a foggier look to it. But, and maybe one or two more colors of blue to make it look a little bit more saturated. But see, I'm kind of blotting that off back there. It looks it look foggier inherently, you know. And in here, I just did it with the pigment ink. But you can do it just by wiping off, you know, the bottom of your piece before you stamp it so it goes from dark to light. And the bottom portion kind of fades out down there, can represent, <clears throat> you know, the, kind of that low-line fog. Anyways, hope you like the scene, hope you like the concept. I'll, like I said, I'll be doing a lot more of these. And to the person that gave me the idea for this, thank you so much. She had uh, given a demonstration to her mother, and she didn't have all of her stuff. She just wanted to do a really quick demonstration of it. And, posted it and I thought it looks great. I thought all of her color saturations are very deep and saturated and everything like that and the scene wasn't lacking for anything, you know. So, um, I don't know. Give me the idea to do this in a, le a lesson format. So, thanks for watching. Hope you like and subscribe and share. And thanks again for always, as always for tuning into the channel.